Hello and welcome to the Telegraph studio and Business Reporter's Future of Insurance campaign hosted by The Telegraph Online. I'm Alastair Greener and today I'm talking to Mark Lusted from Doc9. Good morning. Morning. So what are some of the recent trends in customer demand in the insurance industry? Consistently in our research we see three key areas that customers are really demanding. The first is self-service, second is simplicity, and the third is continuity. So it's amazing to us just how many insurers don't offer full self-service. So customers expect the ability to not just buy their policy online, but also to self-service and manage it, uh, do midterm adjustments, process the renewals. And when, they, when this is implemented, they expect to be able to have a, a really simple interface. Um, so if you think about how many industries of the, the experience has really been simplified from uh, ordering a taxi to ordering a takeaway. Customers are really comparing insurers against these other industries uh, and at the moment it's just not cutting it compared to them. Now insurance companies must have the resources in order to develop websites and apps so they can actually respond to these needs. But my question is why aren't they doing this already? So actually it's not just technology. Uh, the culture and processes of a company can actually create inertia. So it's still not uncommon for us to, to hear that their particular insurance product, their line of business won't be disrupted and it can largely stay remaining how it is. You talked there about insurance industry specifics. So what sort of obstacles do they bring up? So one unique one is that uh, underwriting departments typically dictate the quote and proposal questions and there's often quite a tension between underwriters who want to gather the maximum amount of information on their customers in quite detailed technical language and customers who typically are using a mobile device which is the majority of customers now that want to answer a minimum number of questions in language that they can understand. You're talking about developing a modern user experience. What's the potential impact of not doing that? Last year we saw certain key insurers really start to race ahead in their user experience and really start to match up with other industries. So if you're not doing it, you're going to be left behind. You talked there about established companies with legacy systems. Mm -hmm. What do they do with these systems? Do they just throw them away? So it really depends on the specifics of a company and their existing platforms, but in most instances we'd recommend not tying in digital transformation with a core system rebuild. The main reason is those projects are typically very high risk, uh, uh, often overrun in budget and under deliver on functionality. And often it's not actually necessary. In most cases you can develop a middleware layer that sits between your legacy system and a new uh, front end and actually it's often more cost effective and less risky to do that. Tell us exactly what happens when you start working with a company. So you have to remember most of the companies we're engaging with have a history of uh, failed IPT projects or, or as mentioned projects that kind of over promise and under deliver. So we're really going in there with that history in the background. So our process is really designed around delivering small incremental improvements rapidly. So we start that process with getting their real users into our lab to test the end-to-end -end user experience. So that's the web, apps if they have one, all the way through to their call center. But crucially, we find getting senior stakeholders in the room to see their customers actually experiencing their product can be a real eye-opener and can really get buy-in for, for real change. We're now at a point where you've developed effectively a successful prototype. So what happens next? So the key thing is to adopt agile working practices and institute them within an insurer, which is quite different to what, how they usually work. So by using uh, rapid prototyping, iterating and constantly testing with users in two week uh, short sprints, what we find is that really the business can see change, it can see it evolving really quickly and that really starts to break down the, the cynicism that exists from these previous projects. And how long would this development process typically take? So it really depends on uh, the, the particular insurer's products, number of back-end systems. But as a worst case, you know, if they've got no pro program in place already, we'd always look to institute live improvements within the first five to six months. We're talking about the customer relationship here today, and we see the customer very much more in the driving seat than ever before. What's going to happen next? Let's fast forward maybe five, ten years. Where do you see that relationship standing then? So I think there's going to be some quite uh, distinct changes in certain categories of insurance. So particularly motor and health, where there's really the opportunity to leverage connected devices, to gather lots more information about customers, the ones that are happy to share that with you, to really look to intervene and, and minimise the risk of a claim, a claim by using predictive analytics. So for certain segments, we think actually the relationship between the insurer and the insured is going to change in, in quite a big way. 
it's crucial to remember that most customers don't necessarily want to be highly engaged with their insurer. They really simply just expect an intuitive, simple experience on a par with other industries. And those insurers that don't institute this are going to be left behind. Well, there's one thing for sure is that the customer is very much more in the central focal point of the insurance industry and it's been fascinating finding out how that's going to develop into the future. Mark Lusted from Doc9, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.